Hey everyone, this is a short hip mobility flow that can be used by anyone but is specifically thought uh, with people who practice martial arts, especially grappling and jiu-jitsu in mind. So let's get started straight away with one of the most simple ways to mobilize the hips. So bring the feet wide and begin by windshield wiping the knees from side to side a few times. Now, I always like to imagine here that I'm rocking onto the inner and outer edges of my feet, knees point up and then all the way down. So they don't have to go all the way down, obviously, but the further apart you bring your feet, the easier it will be to fit your knees in this space. And then you can go without your hands, using a little bit more of the active component of your hip structures, more active mobility here. You find that your bum shuffles forwards, probably. That's just part of it. So try, if you want an extra challenge, to keep the bum where it is. And try and keep your spine straight as well. See, I'm kind of failing at that. Nice, so and now keep the legs towards the right. So that you're looking down at your right shin. You can have a big angle here, like a 90 degree angle, if your hips are really open. Or you can close the angle a little, bringing the feet closer in towards your hips. We start by going across towards the right knee. So we're bringing the hands forward over the right knee. And if you're not feeling much here, you should feel it on the outer right hip and thigh. If you're not feeling much, bring the hands a little further across towards the shin and towards the foot. And then from here, we're gonna think about lengthening the spine, so using the breath as well. As you inhale, poke your head up a little bit like a marmot, and then as you exhale, bring yourself down towards the leg. And again, move up as you breathe in. And think about bringing your belly towards your leg and your chest forward in this direction as you breathe out. That will really intensify the stretch. Let's do that two more times. Lengthen and lower. Last time, and lower. And now bring yourself up, keeping that right knee down and yourself in this position. Can you bring the left foot forward? And can you bring it back? Now, you might need a bit of help with your hands, using the hands behind your knee to bring it forward, coming in almost across leg position and back. Bringing it forward, bringing it back. And obviously here you have to shift your weight towards your right hip to do that. And back, forward and back. And then from here, bring the left foot in front of the right shin. Can you push down onto the right um, knee and the left foot to bring yourself up and back down? So we'll add left leg goes back, forward, up and back down, and try and slow it down. Left foot forward, lift up, bring yourself back down, and back. And now we'll go on to the other side. So the same 90-90 position in the legs. Close the angle if you're quite tight in your hips. Open it if you're feeling more open. Going across the left knee first. Feeling how this feels here, maybe it's comfortable, maybe you don't feel much at all. So in that case, bring the hands more towards the left foot. And keeping your hands on the floor here, we're gonna breathe in to lengthen the spine. Again, that poking the head up like a marmot. And as you exhale, bring the chest towards your hands and the belly towards your left leg. And we'll do three more of those. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to lower. And again, inhale to lengthen. Exhale to lower. And I think we've got one more, two more. I lost count. Last one. And lower. Bring your hands back in towards you and maybe use your hand to begin with to take the right knee, bring the right foot forward in front of the left and back. Or maybe you're comfortable enough doing it without the hands. And this is just for strengthening, actually, the hip, as well as creating mobility. 
And then from here, place the right foot in front of the left shin and prop yourself up onto the left knee and back down. Bring the right knee back into this deer position. Right foot forward, lift up and back down. And you can play with, obviously you can bring the right foot a little further back to stretch the front of the thigh. And you can also bring the right foot way further forward, which means you'll have to work a little bit harder to bring yourself up. So in a nutshell, this feels easy, easy or it feels crammed, then place the right foot a little further forward, lean forward and push the hips up and back. Nice. Come back into this deer position or 90-90, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to, again, do another mobility um, flow here. So we're going to prop up onto the knees, lifting the arms up and exhale, bring the bum down. Switch the legs to the other side, inhale, lift up and back down. Knees up to the other side, lift and back down. Knees up to the other side and lift up and back down. Now let's do one more on each side, doing this bit slowly. Up, you can put a little bit of power into the hips as you lift, back down. You don't have to really use the arms, it's just for effect. It feels nice to open and back down. Nice. Let's give the legs a bit of a shake. So feet wide, shake your legs like jelly. And we're working a little bit more on the inner thighs now. So bring the legs wide, as wide as they would comfortably go. So it could be that your comfortable is here or is way more than mine. So point the toes up. That just engages your legs a little bit. I always keep a micro bend in my knees here. I can straighten them. Doesn't feel great because I feel more pain at the back of my knees than actual stretch. So keep your knees bent if it feels okay and if it feels better. So reach the arms up now as you breathe in. We're gonna draw circles. So as you breathe out, bring the hands towards one foot. I'm going towards my left, towards the middle, to the right and up. And again, to the left middle, right and up, last circle, and up, and move towards the other side now, go to the right, middle, left, up, and obviously you can do as many of those as you like, this is supposed to be a short uh, warm up or cool down routine, or just something that you um, include in your daily practice to increase the hip mobility. So now from here, we've done more of an active mobility stretch. You can also come into the more passive, bringing the hands forward, maybe just the hands coming to the ground, maybe the elbows, and you can spend a few moments here. Some people like to shift the body backwards and forwards slightly. Some people prefer to keep this still. Either way, try and breathe deeply here so that you're letting your body know that this stretch is safe to do. So deep breathing, activate that part of the ner nervous system that is to do with safety, with rest and relaxation. And when you're holding a pose between five to 10 breaths, it's usually a good time. Counting breaths, not seconds, it's also a little bit easier. Now bring yourself up, come onto hands and knees, spread the fingers wide, bring the big toes together and the knees wide. We're going to start moving the body in a full circle, so coming forward towards the hands, sitting back towards the heels at an angle, mobilising the whole of the spine, the whole of the body. And try to slow the movement down so you feel where maybe the stiffness is and perhaps you need to spend more time there. Switch direction. And come back. 
back onto hands and knees, bring the knees underneath the hips, take the right leg behind you, breathe in, as you breathe out, right foot outside of the right hand, lift the back knee off the ground and shuffle the back knee further back and you can come onto the fingertips here then replace the back knee down. So we're going to push the chest forward, opening here as you breathe in and breathe out, lean back, begin to straighten the right leg, pointing the right toes up in this half split. And again, come forward here as you breathe in, look up, exhale, lean back, straighten the right leg. This is more hamstring uh, related. Uh, let's do one more. And again, you can carry on doing as many of those as you like. From here, when we come forward next, place the right foot down, note, that the right toes are pointing slightly out. That gives our hips a little more space for what we're gonna do next. So you wanna lift the back knee off the ground and step the left foot next to the left hand and then step it back. So if this feels hard, making it faster actually helps. Slowing it down makes it harder. So breathe in here, breathe out left foot, outside left hand, squat. You don't have to go the way down, you can stay up here. Take the left foot back, left foot forward. Last time, left foot back, left foot forward. And now stay into this squat. So my squat looks like with me having the heels down because this is comfortable. In your case, it might look like this. That's absolutely fine. If you have knee issues or your knees are not feeling great here, lift your bum so you're not compressing into the knees too much. And we're going to take the hands in front of us, come onto the tiptoes anyway, even if you're not. I'm going to roll onto the inner and outer edges of the feet here to once again mobilise the hips. Do this quite slow if you can, so again, chances of hurting the knees are less. I have done that before. So the slower you do it, the more mindful you become of how your body likes to move. If you've got a lot of tightness in your hips, it could be that the knees overtake. And that's when we end up with knee pain and injuries. Okay. So let's come back onto hands and knees now. And we'll go on to the other side. Left leg behind you, breathe in. Step left foot outside of left hand. Obviously, try and do this without any help. But if you need some help, when you get to here and your foot maybe just gets there, take your hand, pick your foot up and place it next to the left hand. Then lift the back knee off the floor just to shuffle the back foot further back, replace the right knee down so you feel a deeper stretch in your right um, quads and the front of the thigh. Breathe in here to open the chest so we're getting that arching action of the spine again. As you exhale, lean back, straighten the left leg, point the left toes up, and dig the left heel down. Breathe in to come forward into this low lunge, which in yoga is called the lizard lunge. Exhale, lean back, half splits. And one more, breathe in to come forward. And breathe out to lean back. And come forward again. Lift the back knee off the ground now, breathe in. As you breathe out, right foot outside, right hand. And back, inhale. Exhale, right foot next to right hand. Use your breath to help you move. Right foot back, breathe in. Right foot next to right hand. This time come down into a squat. Um, this is a little more, well, some people find this quite hard. Some people don't. I'm going to show it to you and then you choose if you want to do it or not. So, if your heels are lifted, this is going to feel like there's a big distance here. So you'll have to round more. So, the point of this, we're going to st start with our spine tall. Breathe in here. And then as you breathe out, pull the belly in, begin to round, plonk your bum down. Grab either your big toes or your ankles. And... Straighten one leg at a time. First, we'll slow it down. And maybe straighten both. Now, if the tendency is to roll back, don't worry, because that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna roll back, legs over our head, breathe in, 
Exhale, come back up. See if you can balance. And then plant your feet back into a squat. Now, I've done it all without the hands. You can do it with the use of the hands as well. So I'll show it in a different way. Breathe in here, lengthen. As you breathe out, bring the hands behind you. Keep the knees wide and plonk the bum. Grab big toes or ankles. Maybe you don't straighten the legs fully. Maybe they're just here. And as you breathe out, roll back. Feet behind the head or in that direction. Breathe in here again. Exhale, come up. See if you can balance on your bum. And then bring the heels down. So again, if you want to use your hands, prop yourself up. Come back into a squat. So let's do one more time. Choose what option you want to do. Breathe in here, lengthen the spine. Breathe out, bring the bum down. Grab the feet, the ankles, whatever you can grab. Bring the legs towards straight. Inhale. Exhale, roll back. Another breath in here. Exhale, come back up. Balance on the bum. And back into a squat. Nice. And straighten your legs here. Come into a forward fold. Bend your knees a little bit. Shake your head. Yes and no. We'll come into a downward dog position. So hands planted on the ground. Feet in a plank first. And then hips high. Downward dog. This is really good to open the shoulders and the hamstrings. So bend your knees a little bit. Pick your bum up and that's your downward dog. We'll come into a pigeon pose from here. So we're going to bring the right shin across the front of the mat and shuffle the back foot further back. Now, now my hips are open but actually not that open. So if you're more open than me, you'll find that your right shin is, if you have a mat, parallel to the front of the mat, which means there's a 90 degree angle between your calf and your thigh. My hip doesn't go that way. So I have to actually close the angle here quite a bit. You can keep the back toes tucked under at first. That gives you an indication of where you are in space. So if all of your five toes of the back foot are tucked under, chances are your hips are nicely squared with the ground, which is generally better for your knees and for your lower back. So if you're like this, fine. You're not going to feel much of a stretch. If you're going the other way, you might twist your knee. So square with the ground. So from here, we're going to push the knee into the ground. So it's going to look like this, I'll, I'll exaggerate it. It looks like you're pushing away. So your bum lifts off and back down. You might not actually get that much movement, but really push the right knee onto the ground, activate the muscles on the outer hip and back down. And then again, and back down. Now you can also come onto the elbows here, folding all the way down. And again, this is a stretch that in yoga we keep for quite a long time usually, but if you just go for the five to 10 breaths, you'll already get some benefits. Make sure there is no pain in your right knee here, that the stretch is felt in the hip and the front of this thigh and hip. back onto the hands now. So same, similar to what we did in the deer pose, we're going to now come onto the right hip. You can use the left hand around the left knee to bring that foot forward. Okay, then from here, lift up. And then you can, if you want to, sort of go into that triangle position or just work on this mobility back into um, Pigeon pose. So again, without the hands, take the leg forward, up. I mean, you can even come all the way up to standing if you want to. And back down, angle that shin, sit down. Left leg sweeps back. Left leg comes forward again. Push down, up. Align the right shin to the side. Up, down. Right shin to about 45, 90 if you're more open, back and back to pigeon. 
you can do as many of those as you like. Again, if you want a deeper version of pigeon, there's two options. You can do an active pigeon. So from here, you actually reach the arms up and you're engaging the muscles a little bit more, hands onto the lower back, arms up. If you want to stretch the quads more, bend the back leg, bring in the left heel to the left buttock, grab the foot to pull it in. That's for those of you who find this whole thing quite easy. And back down. So let's come back to downward dog this time, one leg downward dog. So the right leg sweeps up, keep the right knee bent, draw a few circles with the right knee in one direction, in the opposite direction. And down. Other side, left leg up, left shin across the front of the mat, shuffle the back foot further back. Make sure your five toes of the back foot are tucked under first. Then you can untuck them. Push down with the left knee onto the ground so you separate yourself from the floor. And as you exhale, relax. We'll do this two more times. Push down and release. And again. And release. Come down to the elbows if that's available to you. Getting closer to the ground, closer to the shin. Spending a few moments here, breathing deeply. Coming back onto the hands. We're going for the mobility now. So bring your weight onto the left hip. Use your hand onto the right knee or not to bring the right foot over the left shin. Coming up, back down, angling the shin before you plonk the bum back into that pigeon. Onto the left hip, right foot in front of the left shin, lift up, align the left leg with the side. Maybe come up into a lunge kind of position, back down. Left shin to 45, sit down, right foot goes back, and pigeon. And again, last time. Lift, maybe all the way up, back down, left shin at lines, at a 45 or 90, down, and back to pigeon. So again, you can try uh, King's Pigeon, which is where, actually I prefer to keep my back toes tucked under for this one, so you lift up first with hands onto the left leg, then maybe with hands onto the lower back, then maybe with hands up. It's up to you. Maybe if you just take one breath there, really pushing down and kind of that action of squeezing the legs towards each other, even if they're not together. And then maybe from here you also want to deepen it by stretching the quads, pulling the right heel into the right buttock. And then release and come into child's pose for a moment. So knees together, feet together, stretch the spine to straight. To our back, we finish off with reclined pigeon or figure four stretch. So the right ankle goes over the left leg, and you can stay here if you feel enough of a stretch here, or you can bring the legs in towards you, grabbing the back of the left thigh, threading the arms underneath the space, a triangle shape that you've created. So this you can pull the legs in more to increase the stretch, if it's not enough, without hurting your knee, you can place the right foot further down towards your left hip. So that um, triangle shape becomes smaller. 
you can rock side to side that's nice massage on your lower back and switch sides left ankle above the right thigh bring the legs in thread the arms underneath that space you've created and maybe increase the stretch by bringing you can see better from here the foot left foot closer to right hip for me on this side doesn't feel great remember that all of these Hip openers are meant to be felt in the hips, not in the knee. So to increase the mobility of the hips is to um, prevent knee injuries as much as you can. And now untangle your legs, bring the hands behind your legs, rock backwards and forwards to bring yourself back up to a seat.